this is Daniel, your Game Master and Master of Ceremonies. This is Tori, and I play Dooley. This is Sorcerer, and I play Ty. This is Becca, and I play Mirgrat. And this is Odyssey, a Babylon 5 story. Welcome aboard. Make sure of this. You are a fully bonded telepath, yes? I'm not working with any of the usual types. I want to make sure you're on the level. Good? Good. All right. So I have an idea in my head for a script. It came to me in a dream. But unfortunately, I couldn't quite get it out in time. And it's been bugging me ever since. So if you'd be so kind, just give me a little bit of a scan. See if you could find the dream in there. And then, you know, tell me what it was. You can do that, yes? Yes, you can do that. Go ahead. All right. <clears throat> All right. Oh, I'm ready. Go ahead and scan. Yes, that, that's the one. Oh, oh, to the left. Yes, that's the one. Good. Now, what was that one about? <laughs> ah. Well, I, uh, I guess that was a good dream then. Ah. <sighs> Well, all right, well, uh, I guess that's uh, one way to do things, but uh, whatever, I'll, <laughs> I'll get on the journaling program and figure it out later. Ah, good, you're here, good, good. Pay no attention to that uh, amusing anecdote I was sharing with a uh, telepath who probably needs a lot, a lot of therapy right now. Uh, so, where are we? How Marie Celestia? Yes, good. A Pakmara librarian telepath being possessed by things from beyond the stars. Good. Got that. Uh, oh, that's right. So Duli was working with the Psycops, sort of. They had a blip who was going to scan and help out Duli with the thing from beyond the stars that was in du- Mirgrat's head. Mirgrat, of course, still possessed by the thing. Because that is how possession works. And then... We also had Ty trapped in the past, who had figured out a great weapon of possibly getting back to the present. But it would not be something she could do alone. But I will not go there first. However, we will start with... Oh, much like the person who just ran screaming out of the bar, a telepath about to do a scan. Mm-hmm. Click that All right. So now I turn to... Oh, crud, I forgot his name. Good possession. Kid. Oh, oh Connor. Kid. Connor. All right. And I say, okay, Connor, here's the deal. First of all, do you know how powerful you are, Connor? Um, I, I was I was never rated, but I, I think I'm pretty powerful. I've, I managed to do a few things I'm not really supposed to do. Okay, good. We'll get into that in a minute. Um, so... I want you to do a quick scan of the pock run in behind the jail cell. I believe there are two entities occupying that body. Our goal is to push one out, but I want you to be able to see the differences between the two and understand which one to push out. So the first thing is just do a quick scan. Tell me what you see of two individuals in the body. Okay. Um, I think I could do that. Uh, he, I knew uh, you can do that. That's an easy thing. This is yeah. the easy part. You can do this. He uh, goes up to the door. You know, again, it's a lot of see-through. Not quite bars, but, you know, it's pretty see-through. And uh, he looks in. says, okay, I see. All right. Uh, takes a moment. Rubs his hands together. Rubs his hands on the on the, on the, the wall of the door. He looks into the, uh, into the eyes of Mirgrat. All right, Mirgrat. Yes. All righty. So, <laughs> player three has has entered the tournament. Um. So, while this is all happening, and again, you, you heard some of this stuff before, kind of saw, but you, mostly you heard it. Uh, now in comes this kid, 
uh, you'd probably guess kid is that by the human terms, he's probably about 16, maybe 17. He's still got, he's got some scruff. But he still looks pretty young. Uh, he also, even astrally, doesn't look like he's taking that good care of himself. I mean, again, he's, he's a little on the hungry side. Looks like he could probably use a shower and a shave and a, uh, just the whole, you know, clean himself up a bit. Looks like he's been on the street for a while and it's even affecting his psychic image of himself. Um, so when he looks in and says, okay, just doing a scan here. Nothing, nothing to worry about. You can feel the buzz around your head as it gently, as he gently kind of scans your brain, just doing a surface scan. I'm going to wave enthusiastically. Okay. Um, so for Dooley, the kid looks over and says, um, okay, there are two personalities in there and I think one is unusual so I'm assuming that's the uh, entity you referred to yeah? Well did either entity try to contact you? Uh, One of them tried to get my attention and uh, yeah When you say unusual can you tell me what you mean by that? I'm, I'm still dealing with an alien mind, and I'm not rated for Pachmara, but um, one feels like it's discongruitous, I guess. Either it's a it's a uh, either it's a Pachmara mind that has spent so much time around outsiders that it's kind of shifted to an outsider's point of view, whether that be Narn, Rakiri, Human, Nibari, Vorlon, who knows what, or. Okay. It's uh, another personality, or it's something that is uh, it's a ride along. Like um, there used to be an old term for it. Uh, they used to be called it uh, uh, a walk in. You know, in those days when people still uh, uh, did that whole um, what is it called? Uh, uh, Who done stuff? You know, with the uh, people getting possessed by spirits and gods and such. Okay. You sometimes get a, 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 a ghost that would jump into a person, and they were called a, a walk-in. I know this, so, that's all spiritual stuff and all the rest of that, but you get my meaning. Right. So if you if you were able to read a standard Pachmara, not one who had, for instance, as you said, been touched by alien cultures, um, would you be able to determine which one of the entities in the body is the Pachmara? He stops, he thinks about it, shrugs a bit and says, um, it's, it's a Pachmara. Um, it's, like I said, it's very different. I mean, if you told me if it was, if you told me to do this to a game, oh, heck no. A game or hive mind, that's almost impossible to do. If you told me to do a human? Right. Sure, I'd be able to figure it out, no problem. Um, but on the scale of Humans being most familiar, game being least familiar, Pac, you know, Pachmara is closer to the game than human, but closer to, uh, you know, but, you, but it's not all the way there. You know what I mean? Okay. So she turns to the spiritual advisor and says, this individual is trying to determine who Mirgrat is in that body. And he needs a baseline. He needs something, another Pachmara to, to scan to determine so he can have something to compare it to. Do you give permission for him to scan you to kind of get the flavor of Pachmara in his mind? He looks over and he says, a, a deep scan or surface scan? Surface scan only. He he looks over at the child and says, he looks over and says, he waves his hand up and says, there are things that are secret in there, leave them alone. Otherwise, come on in. All right, so I, Connor, it's it's important. Surface scan only. Surface scan only. Uh, I got it. I got it. All right. He like once again rubs his hands together. Okay. <sighs> Stares at the the at Kurbusek. Actually, put his fingers to his temples for a second for whatever <laughs> reason. And it's okay. Got it. All right. It's again, yeah. Working a base code. It's going to differ from person to person, but I think I got it. Okay, all right. I've got at least a general template to work with. Uh, 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 thank you, uh, officer. Uh, so, uh, all right, let's head back to your friend here. Let's see what we got. And again, pulls his fingers out. 
rubs his hands together, puts his hands on the, on the wall, stares deeply into Mirgrat's eyes. So for Mirgrat, uh, once again, he's doing another general sweep of your mind. You can feel a little tingling sensation around your brain as he does the surface scan. Again, it kind of feels like, um, like a laser scanner being, you know, circled around your head and you can kind of see the image of that red flashing around your, your ethereal plane area. Okay. And, uh, but you can also see that it too is also being scanned the same as you are. This time though, you could see a bit more of it. It, again, it's so strange. Tentacles that ended fingers and hands, uh, but they're not standard human hands. They're, again, weird five pointed starfish things. Uh, you see this, these, these fans, like, these wings that look not unlike, uh, uh, uh hand fans, those big Japanese, uh, wicker fans. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, uh, again, the body looks like somebody had taken a starfish and stretched it into a barrel. Very top of which being this another big starfish with eyes at the end of each, uh, end of each tendril of, of the starfish. And it kind of looks around a little bit, blinking back and forth. And it just kind of holds up one of its tendrils and in a bizarre gesture, friendly waves at you. I mean, I'm gonna wave back, I guess. Okay. It then, um, actually tosses something in the ground between you. Now the gap between the two of you is about, astrally speaking, probably about, uh, 50 to 100 feet. So dis- pretty distant enough. But the fact that he kind of tossed something in the ground between the two of you, and it's not something big, it's, it's like, you know, a couple of small objects on the ground in front of you. And, or not in front of you, but you know, between the two of you. Uh, and he just like looks at you, like he's waiting for something. So, sorry, and and this is the entity that was in my head. Uh huh. Hmm. I'm trying to think what to do here. <laughs> it's amazing I'm, with telepathic contacts, isn't it? I'm gonna do. I think I'm just going to open up like a crevasse and swallow off whatever it tossed there and then close it back up again. Okay. Easy enough. You're just kind of doing the, I'm not interested. <laughs> Gone. Yeah. So, okay. So back with Dooley, Connor comes out and says, okay, uh, yes, there are two things there. One thing feels more popular than the other. Uh, okay. So, um, you wanted me to get it out? I want... I, I just want... I, we need to make sure we're getting the right one out. One is an alien that has taken over the body of the Pakmara, whose name is Miagrat. Um, yeah. she's a, they are a librarian. Uh, it is important that you get the correct one out, the one that doesn't belong there. Now, I know nothing about psychic activities, but I would assume that the person that doesn't belong there might be a little easier to get out than the person who does. Uh, I've never dealt with a possession like this either, but I guess it works a lot like, uh, you know, when you get a transplanted organ and it doesn't take, okay. and it's not the right things like that. So I guess it's part of it. You know, the body will reject that which isn't supposed to be part of it, but you're talking about the mind. But even the mind, again, with the neural connections and everything else, you're talking about the fact that you have all these network paths made for a certain size, shape, and functionality, and something that doesn't meet that is going to meet resistance. So in the same way that, again, doing a deep scan always gets resistance, this thing will be like on the opposite of a deep scan and kind of like pushed a bit. Okay. So... So, mm -hmm. You just need to make sure you have the right person. Mirgrat yeah. is the owner of the body. Okay. All right. He once again shakes his hands and says, "This is gonna hurt." All right. You or he her over it. or them? You or them? <laughs> Don't ask the question. Right. I mean, okay. probably. Yep. 
All right. He says, it'd probably be easier if I could physically come in contact, but I'll stay here where I am. All right. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's not possible. So, yeah, you'll have to do it from here. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. He actually shrugs his shoulders. He looks like a guy who's about trying to do a, a full bench press, and he's like going, he does the, like, the stretches, lifts his legs a little bit, shakes his arms out, crunches up his shoulders a little, does a roll, cricks his neck, and actually at one point grabs his chin and pops his neck, you know, you know, cracks his neck a little bit. But, all right. Okay. Whew. Stops for a second. It's in a position, relaxes for a bit, puts his hands on the wall, stops, turns to Dooley and says, um, you wouldn't happen to have a mouth guard on you, would you? Um, I, I kind of do a brief mental inventory of my pockets and I look over in a desk, is there any sort of, like, paper that I can fold or... No, this is a pretty much okay. a paperless society, they yeah, say. Yeah, paper any sort of, um, kind of... Oh, like a, a pad that you put on the desk, put your hot coffee cup on it? Uh, do a quick notice check. Okay. This guy is such a drama queen. Goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta be said, there's no such thing as a drama queen. There is a thespian. Um, <laughs> 29. <laughs> 29, okay. <laughs> So you quickly find something to act as like a, a a bit, you know, for lack of a better term. And again, your little couple things of uh, pork that somebody has for a, a coffee mug, you know, holder. He's like, okay, here you go. He's like, all right, rolls it up, shoves it in his mouth. Okay. <sighs> and puts his hands on the thing and pushes forward. Near grass. Okay. Yes. So... You definitely get the first sensation of pain. This guy is doing a deep scan, and deep scans are never comfortable. Um, and so you can feel that kind of pressing up against your brain. It's not unlike being stabbed or having one of those bad bad ice cream headaches that just feels like somebody is stabbing into your head between your eyes over and over and over again. Fucking hate those. Oh, yes. Um, so, yes, it's just getting kind of painful and more painful and you can kind of feel your astral self and the room that you've been sharing with the thing shake for a bit. You can actually see its tendrils shaking for a moment or two. It looks over at you he looks over and says, while the room is shaking. Are you sorry we couldn't come to an accord, or are you sorry that you're getting kicked out? He looks over and says, the accord, obviously. This is fair, but I give you no ill will. You have been helpful to me, and I owe you a small good. Very soon a large. You may collect it when the time is right. So. <clears throat> and then it leaves, right? And I have my body back? Oh, it, nothing's that simple, and I'll explain why in a few moments. <laughs> of course, of course. There we go. And one here. All right. So, it is kicked out of your body, and you can kind of see it coalesce for a little bit back into the golden energy that you once saw it as. Basically, you realize that the shape that you saw of the golden energy coming out of uh, your Pakora friend, actually uh, out of uh, Tomasi, is actually a silhouette of what it once was. And so, that silhouette goes back to golden energy and is kind of floof out like dust in the wind getting swept up in the vacuum of this deep scan. You with the uh, uh, the void clears up for a bit. It becomes more your mind very quickly. It's again not instantaneous because it does take a few minutes for 
for lack of a better term, a reboot and reinsertion of your programming. Your hard drive yeah, has been has been reformatted to allow for the your programming to re 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 upload and re image. Um, however, as you can kind of feel yourself coming into your body, that crevasse you opened opens again, and out pops up that thing he threw. Do you look at it? I feel like I shouldn't, but I do. It's a pair of dice. It's a pair of Monopoly dice. Double ones. Snake eyes. Okay. You see that for a moment, and you'll probably understand it in a few minutes. However, uh, you do feel your body coming back. You can kind of take a moment to shake your limbs out just to get your feeling again, but you've really felt like you've developed a lot. you developed your psychic talent a lot while you are in there. That's why you're now a second level telepath. Uh, but you're now back to being your body. It's all yours. You can very much feel it. All presence of it has been purged from your system almost entirely. Yay! Any residuals you had of Amber is gone. Julie! So this is what you see. For a minute, okay. um, the, uh, the kid is bracing onto the door and is screaming. Mirgrat is also screaming. Just in absolute pain and agony as there's like this push back and forth. And at one point... He's like, oh, I got you! 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 Ah! He screams and screams and screams to the point that it just is starting to resonate everywhere. It's almost louder than you could possibly imagine a human ever screaming. Kupusek dives on you just as a full board tackle and takes you to the ground. Me? The reason it is, all of a sudden, the glass around, or the, the plastic seal, whatever it is, the transparent material around the various cells shatters. Oh, and great. just goes flying. Now, thankfully, there's also bars in between, but so it's not like that bad, but it just boom! And the kid just, like, spits out the bit. Ah! 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 <sighs> okay. I I look at him. Does he look okay? He looks sweaty. He looks shaking a little bit. His eyes are closed. Undamaged. It looks undamaged. I look at Mirkarat. Mirkarat looks also undamaged, though Mirkarat is slowly blinking their eyes open, slowly flexing their fingers, like they're trying on a suit again they haven't been in for a while, just to make sure it still fits. Okay, I am going to give a quick thank you to uh, the Pakmara that saved me from multiple injuries, and stand up and step towards Mirgraft. There are still bars there, you said, right? Yes. Okay. Um, Alright, I am going to... Uh, yeah. Uh, Mirgrat, is, is that you? Do I have control of my body? Yes, you do. If I were to say that it is me, would you believe me? No. I am so proud of you, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't mean to offend, but you were going to have to stay in there for a while. That is entirely acceptable. May I have my air fresheners back? Oh, yes. Uh, can I hand them through the bars, or will I get oh, the doctor? Easy. Okay, so, Easy. yeah, I put the I put them uh, on the floor near the inside, and I turn to Connor, and I say, Well, this is a fine mess you've gotten yourself into. Do I have, uh, during my notice before, did I happen to see any form of restraints? Uh, not offhand. If they have any, they probably keep them under lock and okay. key just so that no civilian can get their hands on it. I grab him by the upper arm and I start pushing him towards a cell. Destruction of property. Um, yeah. I'm sure we can think of a few more 
things to charge you with. But destruction of property, I would have to say, is the primary one. You're not going to be out of here for a long time. Unfortunately, your psychop friends, they're just going to have to wait for you. And I open up the door and I push him inside. <laughs> and I lock the door. Okay, well, first of all, I'll need you to make a gravel check. Yes. Uh, what is am I adding to that? Uh, let's just say it's like an attack roll with your just a strength bonus. Okay, yeah, that really sucks, but... Um... Not bad, 15. Okay. So, you grab his collar and says, okay, you know, grab his upper arm and says, all right, you're getting in the cell, you got your property damage, this and that. <laughs> he went, he literally but just, I make sure to say, your psychop friends are going to have to wait a really long time for you. <laughs> That's the key light I'm throwing in there. Yeah. He says, he, like the, he looks over, you know, grabs the looks on your arm. Yes, a very long time. And this is where I'm going to need... Oof, uh, a fortitude save from Dooley. Okay. Okay. I was hoping... He's got to... 15! Okay. Not bad. So you don't take any damage when you feel a punch in the middle of your chest knocking you back about five feet. He didn't move. He looks over and, and says, do I, what? do I see anybody in front of me? No. Okay. Just, uh, just, are, just Connor. Look at Connor. Are you assaulting an officer? He looks over with his, with his eyes on you. His eyes have turned this kind of, uh, interesting golden color. Oh no. Oh no. Uh-oh. I'm <laughs> opening up the door and shoving him in. <laughs> so. I'm no longer being gentle about it. Uh huh. So what's he, you know, when you, when you go, oh no, quick, uh, just quickly give me an initiative check. Alright. You got very lucky there. Uh, go ahead and make a grapple check as you go, wait, no, no, give me another grapple. 11. Ooh, okay. Not, you kind of do the, come here, and you have enough to get your hand on uh, Connor to kind of shove him in a cell but in return Connor just stares at you and you flip to the back just kind of whoop, you're in the back of the room now okay so I'm yelling at the the, the pock rush shut the door shut the door lock the cell <laughs> <laughs> the kid once again little bleeding from the nose licks his fingers and Kupusek is thrown into one of the cells. The door is still open. He goes over, kind of literally just kind of uh, taps the... the. Uh, actually, <laughs> he taps the door with your badge that for some reason is now in his hand, tosses it back to you, opens the door, and walks out. And he literally goes, I believe we were going somewhere, officer. I am going to run to the door. Okay. I'm going to look at the Psycops and say, that is not Connor, that is an alien entity. This is where we're going to pause for you for a while, because while I get sure. the rhythm here, this is a lot, a lot going down. Let's go back to Ty. Okay. <laughs> so, <clears throat> strange things that has gone down. You've, been, again, given the book, found out the guy who knows something about temporal mechanics, apparently, and has said how happy he is that you've actually managed to uh, circle, you know, became a looper, as if you will. Um, close the loop. Uh, he walked back to the library, and you were going to head back to try to find a crystal person to uh, see about getting you back in to your old body. And so, it failed. Yes, correct. So what's the plan? Alright, plan C slash D is... I am going to start a fire, create some other emergency distraction in, like, the ground floor or whatever main area of the library is, and then when everybody goes over there or, like, evacuates or whatever, I'm going to grab some more books, because someone took my other one. (laughs) 
Wait, and you gonna... did! <laughs> uh, um, and then, if that works, I'm going to take these books, make Dr. whatever his name is, write me and my kid's name in them, since apparently he knows how to do that. And then, either him or me, the depending, I guess, he owes me, honestly, like, big time. So probably him will put the books in the vault, and then I guess we'll just wait and hope that... Um, either I can get a blue rock so I can call home, phone home, so I can phone home, or, um, the sun explodes and we go to the future and everything works out. This is the least worst plan I've come up with so far, honestly. I'm kind of proud of this point. <laughs> it's not utter dog shit, I'm really proud of this. Uh, <laughs> That's a good point, since some bad points. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry, this is where the nervous laughter of how did we get into this place? Okay, right. Yeah, got it. Uh, that's right. I wrote us in here. Uh, <laughs> it's fine. It'll be fine. It's okay. Uh, again, this is used to the point where the writer stops what they're doing. Um, walks away from the computer, goes, does something to process this for a bit, and then kind of, co- and usually at this time, judges the, the choices they have made in their lives. Uh, <laughs> I makes great choices, so. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you're going to try to start some sort of emergency to clear out the library, steal mm-hmm. another book, take it mm-hmm. back Two to books. the doctor. Two a couple books. books. Uh, take it back to the good doctor so he can inscribe your name in the books in the hopes that you will be able to be summoned to the future in the same way that his book was found to him previously. Yes. All that's, right. Yeah, that's about it. All right. So give me a... Let's start with the basics and investigate, please. Because you have to find out how to make a fire for this thing. You know, like fire, some other, some emergency, just whatever is easiest and most convenient. Ty doesn't really care if she kills anybody, so even if it's <laughs> not, even if it's a really dangerous emergency, she'll probably still do it. Yeah, because everybody on this planet's been offended, been dead for uh, 4,000 years. And sure. you rolled a five! God! <laughs> the place not with you today! This is my worst skill, like, one of my two worst skills. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> I will do any emergency, like start a fire, or set off a fire alarm without starting a fire, pull the sprinklers or whatever the space equivalent is, release semi-toxic gas, just any old thing. <laughs> Not something where she wouldn't be able to get in, obviously, because that would like ruin the point, but you know, the, that's the limit there. Okay, so just some emergency... All right. This is where I <laughs> with a with a five and everything else. Like this is where I bring the cards out. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm still giggling. Like the wow. Okay. I'm not sure how this is all gonna go. I don't have everything statted out. Okay. Fine. We'll, we'll run with it. Um. I just keep thinking of schemes until one of them works or a tide dies in the sun explosion. <laughs> one or the other. Implosion. <laughs> Whatever. Oh my god. Oh my god, I have to laugh. The cards I just drew... Oh no. <laughs> not black and white. Bad decision. Literally, you got the card labeled bad decision. And path, right. and path least traveled. I have never pulled a path least traveled card in, in working with this deck ever. Uh, so... Okay. Oh. All right. I'm going to have some fun with you. And... Okay. Where's that other die? Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. I have a thought. I have a weird thought. I have a thought mm-hmm. that may or may not be something that is something you agree with, 
but so far you've been very lax with all this, so I'm going to run with it. If it's something that you have a problem with, we can either change it in-game, uh, solve it in-game, or otherwise uh, uh, deal with this. Are you okay with that? Sure, whatever. Okay. So, you look for something to cause some sort of emergency. A flood, a fire, poisonous gas, a rampant orgy, a call to arms, a call to, to prayer, something! Um... And you find so little that you're absolutely flabbergasted. And at some point, though, uh, wandering around the library, one of the people in the library comes over and says, I'm sorry, can I help you today? Um, I don't know. Well, not from here. Very few of us are. I was myself recruited from a far starship, far off into the future. Uh, again, tell me about it. Uh, Not literally. It's figure speech. <laughs> they laugh. I'm familiar with that speech. It's okay. We 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 have such speak such for words and phrases where I come from. So. What seems to be the problem? Really want to know? I, I would not be here if I did not. Alright, well the problem is me and my son are stuck on this shitty planet where the sun's about to explode and I need to get off of it. Well, we're all supposed to be given new bodies, new lives, new everything else. I, At least that's what I've been told. Yeah, do you believe that? Because I sure don't. It was the promise given to me, and I have learned so much since being here. But I admit, clock is getting a little close on the money. Mm-hmm. Well, hmm. I don't know you, and you don't know me, but I guess that doesn't really matter at this point because this is crazy world. So, how about, thought, you help me with my problem... I help you with your problem, which is really the same problem I have, and we try to get out of this thing before the sun vanishes and everybody dies horribly. Silver says, All right. Let's assume they are not true to their word and that time and all that does not really happen. There may be a way of doing this, but it is risky. Are you willing to take that risk? What are my other options? Die when the sun explodes? I'll take any risk. Almost any risk. Hey, Nod. Alright. Okay. So, yeah. This is, say, of course. I think... I think there may be something to what you say. And if not, then this will all revert anyway, so I don't think it'll harm anything. But I know of two or three, actually up to five, bodies that are expected for transfer. The Yithian mm-hmm. who were supposed to go got redirected to other points for the course correction some time ago. I happen to hear on this. If if what you want is just a way out, I think I can propose it. Um, I can't guarantee what's on the other side. I literally cannot guarantee anything. But if you want a way out, I will go with you. Gather your, your son. And he kind of sighs says, come back to the library in six hours. The rotating shift happens then, and I know where... I know where a few things can be held. So, I'll need all three of you to do this. This is not something I could do on my own. What exactly do you want me or um, us to do? He kind of sighs a little bit. To, um, traveling like this, if you're not prepared, can shred your existence. I don't have the strength for all of it. Shared, however, you might be able to do this. It's going to hurt. 
it's going to hurt a lot. And we're kind of sacrificing those who would take our place. But I believe they're volunteers. I don't care so about that. So I think... I hear what you mean. All right. All right. Them or us, I guess, right? Exactly. Okay. I can get the book. I need you to get a crystal just for securing everything. It acts as a homing beacon. There's one. I know of one. It can be gotten. Um, it's not going to be easy, but you have to... Looks over and says, you have to convince one of the sentinels to let you have it. You can identify a sentinel by the uh, silver Y-shaped sash they're wearing. Not the gold ones, the silver. If you can convince one of those to, to let you borrow or give you um, a, a, gold, a, a blue crystal, meet me back here in six hours, and I think we could do it. Sure. This isn't the worst plan I've heard all day. He looks over and says, "Well, I'm I'm kind of winging it here, and um, I don't know what to how this is all going to come out. It might not be the best plan. It might be the worst plan. We may end up in a paraplegic or a uh, uh, into another ship that's doomed to die, or who knows what." Cross that bridge when we come to it, as the humans say. Not that that means anything to you. He kind of, like, oddly kind of hums to himself. Um, okay, so six hours. Right. Six, um, six hours. Six hours. All right. So he moves off. Um, I'm guessing you go to uh, try to find a, uh, a sentinel, yes? Uh, yep. Okay, as well. Give me a, Give me a notice check. (laughs) What'd you roll? Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. Uh, In this particular case, with everything else, all right. So you find a sentinel who is uh, taking inductions. He says, ah, yes, you remember one of the recruits. Very good. Let me get you to one of the areas. Uh, Please. Uh, go with the, this person who will be able to help you. He sees you walk up. Yes. Can I help you, inductee? My name's Ty. Ty. I was once name? known as, I was once known as Vladimir. Vladimir. Interesting. So tell me about yourself, uh, Vladimir. <laughs> I come from, uh, a, a, a world far away called Earth. Uh, from mm-hmm. a place called Romania, uh, mm-hmm. from, uh, 1642. Um, I encountered a book at an alchemist lab. I did the rites and rituals. I contacted one of the great, uh, beings and was able to transfer my body here. I liked it here so much that I volunteered to stay here and, and help other people find bodies until the time of the reckoning. And, um, until then, he the, the being lives in my body, and he is uh, making sure I escape uh, the ruins of my family home and makes his way to uh, to England. Oh, how interesting! Um, so, what what do you like about the what do you like <laughs> about it so much here? So you're just gonna chat him up for a while? I'm just gonna do that. Okay. And then so I'll chat- probably hit on him eventually. I'm going to do plan A, except slightly modified. Okay. So uh, go ahead and give me a uh, diplomacy, I guess, is the best way for this one. Sure. Yeah, no, you got extra points of diplomacy now. Something I'm actually good at, finally. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Is a 22. twenty-two. Not bad. Okay, so yeah, you, you get real friendly with him, and you know he tells you about his home life, how he was formerly in uh, the Hungarian area. What you know, what time you know, 
during one of the major wars that happened during then, and he really wanted out, found the alchemist book, which was kept in a keep, and then he tried some of the rites and rituals in an attempt to finding some sort of way out, contacted the being, says, I got a way out for you. He said, sure, takes it. He much prefers here, where it's peaceful, they give you all the food you want, and they give you all the learning you want, and you don't have to worry about getting killed every two minutes. Um, and he left his body with the other being in the hopes that eventually the being will do it do him a favor, get into a place of safety so that when they change back or otherwise they transition to someplace else, that he'll be safe. But yeah, so he's the happy as heck to, to keep working as a soldier here because that's pretty much what he was back home. Um, I bond with him over our shared experience in war, I guess. As, as you are a, a technically a sort of veteran of the of the Shadow War, you got caught in the crossfire a number of times. More or less, like a civilian victim, more like, but sure. Close enough. Mm-hmm. Well, one way or the other, you know, you, you did see battle. Not, sure. what, not what you wanted to go to, but it kind of found you. So, okay. So you bond with him for a while, and he, too, you talk about war and how things change. He, when he finds out that you're from the 2200s, he's amazed. He, he was worried that the world would end by the 2000s or somewhere like that. There's been a couple of preachers who, who, who spread some things. But then again, there's preachers saying that the world should have ended 20 years before his time, let alone 400, you know, 400 years after his time. And so, yeah, he, you know, you guys bond for a little bit and you talk and talk and you really get to know the guy. And he's not a bad guy. He's just kind of, again, desperate guy, weird situation. Um, but he's happy as heck to be useful to somebody who isn't trying to kill him or demanding strange oaths of loyalty in exchange for his life and soul. So he also sees this strange, weird place as a price he's paying, but at least according to the bargain that he had with the thing, he should be returning to his old time eventually. I insinuate that they're really taking their time getting him back to his own time before the sun explodes. He kind of nods and he says, yes, but, you know, time is all relative and all that. But, you know, because it's not like flowing at the same time that we are here and they're there. That's something I learned about in some of the books. Uh, but, you know, I see what you mean. Mm-hmm. So, really cutting it close here. So you're going to try to turn him to your point of view to hopefully not just as not just as the I clunk him over the head and take his jewel but like why don't you come with me and let's get oh, let's all get the hell out of here that's what I'm thinking about doing uh-huh let's face it if Ty tried to hit someone upside the head and steal something she would probably manage to like break her own foot instead then uh, no yeah. all right well technically you don't have a feet you have an interesting uh, uh, pseudopods but anyway but I get you beating uh, yep yeah. So, let's see, that is, is that diplomacy as well? I feel like that's diplomacy, but I, I want to double check that one, because you're convincing him of, of following your lead, essentially. Slash so, seducing him, kind of, yeah. like, a, in between, yeah. Fair enough. Oh, oh what would Connor say? Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll figure that out later. Oh, yes, yeah. I can already hear, I can already hear, uh, Ty's thing in my head. What will Connor say? Well, they'll get bodies, you get bodies, and then, you know, get the two of them in the same room with you, and, you yeah, know, we'll figure something out. Um, <laughs> it'll, work out. it'll work itself out. <laughs> so you're not bluffing, and, uh, diplomacy is investigation, bargaining, and persuasion. Yep. Alright. Let's do a diplomacy check, and impress me. Thirty-three. Thirty-three. <laughs> oh my God! Uh, uh, Bell Gibson should record a lot of what you said just now and make it his next movie, like Braveheart. Not the anti-Semitic stuff he does later, but you know, like Braveheart. You know, this is your like, you know, uh, this is your uh, 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 William Wallace on a horse speech at this point. <laughs> you know, you're just doing the, yes. you are very persuasive about, look, you know, it may seem like this, but don't you want a chance? Don't you want a chance to get this right? And eventually he's, uh, uh, okay, yes. Yes, I do. Okay, okay, I admit, I do. It's, then, then here's the chance. Come with me. Bring your crystal. I'll get my son. We'll have another accomplice, and we will have a place we can go. He says, are you sure? He says, just don't tell anybody. This is what we're doing. 
And again, you're in or out, and right now, no way, you know, and he says, it's just kind of shake, he shakes his head up and does, okay, okay, I'm in, I'm in. <sighs> Don't make me regret this. And you're like, hey, of course not. You're so, gonna love the future, buddy. <laughs> so, yes, you guys, um, gather together. You, uh, you find, uh, the other person you were talking to, whose name was Wagner, by the way. Uh, mm-hmm. but, uh, uh, Vladimir and Wagner, and I guess you grab your, your son, right? Yes, we're not gonna leave him <laughs> behind <laughs> in the past. <laughs> okay. So, uh, you gather with Wagner under the library, and you see this interesting, well, it looks initially like an old, sci-fi idea of a transporter pad, these teleportation circles and things like that, except it also looks like somebody had designed them like a bad movie uh, uh, occultist circle. But it still looks like a, a, a an old sci-fi transporter pad. But again, you know in the future that teleportation is near impossible. Uh but at the same time, it was nice fantasy to have that whole, you know, you stand in the circle and you appear in another circle. Um, but they have this, this huge room with basically spaces for probably the eight to ten of you people inside this matter transmitting occult circle thing. I have to ask, mm-hmm. is there somewhere in the back of Ty's brain in which they're going, if I could just figure this out, we could market it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe. I think she's a little bit preoccupied. With Otherwise, the whole yeah, if this was like, yeah, if this was like in the future, like her regular time, she would definitely be like looking for, trying to like do some spying right quick and see what this is. <laughs> so, Wagner is there with the book, very large tome. He says, and they say, okay, so. Um, you, you, you brought up your son and, and you brought a friend? He's cool. <laughs> He's good for it. Vladimir says, I, I, I agree with Ty here about, uh, the situation and I, I'm willing to take the chance that she is. He's your good son for just kind of, his son just, your son just kind of holds on to you the whole time. Well, we're gonna be okay, right? I think so. More okay than we are now. I hope. Okay. So, alright. And, so, uh, Wagner says, okay, everybody gather inside the circle. Wagner shuffles in himself, in themselves. Alright. Pinpointed a group of people who transferred out, whose Yithians did not make the journey. I think we can, uh, change ourselves out for them. It's going to be tricky, and it's going to be weird, and it's going to hurt, but I think we can do it. Is everyone ready? Sure. <laughs> Glad to be oh, everything, okay? everything okay in the background? I hear thumping. Oh, sorry, that was for me. Um, I think that was my partner with their cycling bins. Oh, okay, <laughs> no worries. Just, just like the, what, the, everything okay back there? No, like, uh, but okay. So yeah, so you hold on to each other, you know, it's okay. Wagner says, alright, everyone put your, you know, claw on the book. And it does. Book opens a little bit. Wagner kind of flips through a couple pages. And, uh, here, here. This is the point of the timeline. We have to go. And everybody, hold on. And this is where you make a fortitude save. Don't oh boy. blow it. <laughs> oh boy. I wish <laughs> one. Here we go again. Yep. Mm-hmm. 13. Okay, you did not blow it. It <laughs> hurt. It is very much like having your soul torn from your body, thrown into a shredder, reforged in heat, poured back into your body as liquid metal that has been superheated and wait and then blasted with cryogenic fluids to get it to sub-zero temperatures in a matter of moments. It hurts. It is, you can already hear the mental screaming of everybody in this transition, including your son. But, 
when you come out of it, you feel a body again. You don't feel the clackers. You don't feel the trumpet. You don't feel the weird face mandibles. You can stretch out your fingers a little bit. Okay. Two, three, four, five on each hand. That's good. You kind of shake up your your legs. You have two legs with two feet, five uh, uh, five toes at each foot. Okay, you have a spine, you have a back, you have a stomach, you've got lungs because you can breathe. Okay, that's good. You've got a head because it jiggles a little bit and it feels mostly Bercari. It doesn't feel entirely right. Your vision's a little off. Um... I look for my son. Okay. You look down, and you see four other people. <laughs> um. <laughs> all right. Okay. So, one's a Drazi, who is... Shaking his hands out, go. What? What? What is this? What is this? You will tell me what is this? Um, another one who looks Bakari, except a very strange version of Bakari. Hair is like bright red, a lot like like ginger, but like like halfway to pink, like <laughs> a neon red. And they're like, I, I, I don't know, I don't know. It's a Bakari female. I don't, I don't know. I it's. This is this is new to me. This is very new to me. You look over, and there is a child there. The guys kind of got lucky on that one. There is a child. He's about, you would guess, about five years older than your own son, and he's missing his head ridges. He's not Bricari. He's human. Oh, good. It looks up and says, Mom? Mom, where are you? Mom? Right here, I'm right here. This is me now. I'm like Let's checking, go. like to see what the fuck I am supposed to be now. Okay. Well, let's see. Let's see how really lucky you are. Uh, let's see here. I have specific dice for this, which has actually come in handy more often than you can imagine. Uh, let's see. So you are female. You got lucky. That's good. You are. Yeah. Your son is also male. Um, whoops, sorry, excuse me, female. So it's now your daughter. Um, and you are now human. Still all the same stats as your character sheet, basically. Again, at the moment, you just kind of like, uh, Rikari, no, human. Everything else remains the same, because everything else is culturally based. Uh, but yes, you're in a human body now. The other thing you look around... You're on a ISA transport. You're on, if not the right time, you're close. Well, I would like to freak out, but that's probably not a good idea. So I just start, like, <laughs> telling everybody to stay calm. Like, okay. just everybody. Okay. Okay. Stay, we're, we're calm. We're calm. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the female Bricari says, I understand. I understand. We're calm. Centered, Hook understood this. But Drazi looks over and says, But, but, I'm, I'm a lizard! I'm a lizard now! Mm, I'm not really sure what kind of. I don't know. You might be a mammal. I'm not really <laughs> sure what a <laughs> Drazi are. <laughs> but, but you're at least. But, she's, but you actually know what these are! You, you, you've heard of this. He raises his hands up and down in front of this! Oh, yes. Don't worry. You're uh, you're in good shape. You're set up. All right, very good, very good. I will then call. The uh, the other one, the the, the female who's obviously Wagner, uh, looks over and says, uh, "I see writing over here. Um, is a strange symbol. I'm not entirely familiar with it. The writing is very stylized, but it looks like English." Go over uh, and look at it. <laughs> look at it. it. You recognize the symbol of the Tau Marie, which is the mm-hmm. corporation. 
and it is at 38, uh, Rosie Celestia. Congrats. Oh. You're back. So, with that in mind... Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh... I said I was going to get the group back together one way or the other. Uh, <laughs> is this one of those points where you're about ready to go, you bastard? Uh, I, for one, am super psyched for all of our new time displaced buddies. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mirgrat will have so many questions for them. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be really fun for her oh. to, to explain how she's human now, I guess. Oh my god. We're not gonna have so many questions for you. <laughs> really, I'm just gonna sit Cultural down and say I give up. Problem. <laughs> yeah. Um, can we cut to commercial for ten? We will cut to commercial. I will leave the computer uh, running. Everyone back? I'm here. Uh- Okay, so by the way, you tie, you do realize you had your your uh, your episode closing of the I'm a oh no. Um, <laughs> just be thankful you rolled. Ty has been game. very mean to and about every human that she's met this entire time. So this is kind of karma for her in a way. <laughs> karma, or you're now officially in a Twilight Zone episode. Mm. Uh, it's kind of Actually, there literally was a Twilight Zone episode like that. They tried to remake it for the movie, and it's literally the movie that, the part of the movie that killed people. Um, you guys I know about the Twilight right? Zone movie. Oh, well, there you go. I'm sure I've made it. I know what episode you mean. I've seen it. That's why I was like, <laughs> yeah, that's basically what Twilight Zone is about, but I haven't seen, I didn't know there was a movie. Yeah, yeah, there's a movie with, uh, like four segments directed by a big, uh, big, uh, directors at the time. Steven Spielberg did one. John Landis did one. Uh, mm-hmm. I can't, uh, Walter Hill did one. And they're all basically redoing it in classic episodes of the Twilight Zone. Unfortunately, the one that John Landis did, uh, was about a, a bigot who, like, jumps from body to body when he, but when he jumps from body to time, he's always the subject of the racism. And at one point, to uh, quote unquote uh, redeem himself, he jumps into Vietnam. And is supposed to be saving these two Vietnamese kids from an uh, uh, American attack with a helicopter going off in front of them. However, during the filming, which happened at night with kids who were not SAG, kind of like under the table, uh, an explosion went off, was mistimed, hit the helicopter, who then tipped over, and the kids and the actor went through the blades. That sounds bad. Oh, really bad. It actually became a court case in the 80s where John Landis had to be in court for like a couple of years trying to defend himself. And again, he was kind of let off the hook. But there's a, a story everyone mentions. Again, people this ruined his career, as you imagine, and ruined everything about uh, his yes. reputation. <laughs> uh, that but apparently, I've never heard of him. John Landis, the guy who bought us Ammo House and Ghostbusters. It was the director yeah. of both. So anyway, so back to Dooley and uh, Mirgrat. So uh, I think I know what's going to happen. Again, this is going to be a little bit of a fiat for dramatic purposes. Um, but I think you'll understand what's going on in a few bits. Oh, boy. You're like, somebody stop. Uh, stop the kid. Stop the kid. And, you know, you're basically yelling at, at uh, uh Kripusek to close the door, get get the kid, and anytime this happens, like I said, Kripusek got flung into uh, a cell, cell door didn't open, your badge kind of flies off you, your kid's got it, he uses it to un- undo the door, kind of tosses it over his shoulder back to you, and he walks out the door to the side cops, and the, the side cops says, are you ready to go- come with me? Raises up his hands, if that's what has to happen... Uh, Dooley, you get to shout one thing. What do you shout? It's not Connor. It's an alien in his body. And so they go, wait, what? And by the time they go, wait, what? 
he takes his hands, does that flick motion. Both of them get shoved into the walls. And by now, Connor's nose is bleeding kind of profusely. And he just, and he just walks out the front door. Door closes behind him. All right, I am on the link. <laughs> I'm laying the captain. Okay. So <laughs> you're like captain. We got an alien being. It's on this person named Connor. And like that person named Connor. Uh, yes, he assaulted uh, various people at the station and is now roaming free. He is a high level spy. We need to apprehend him. He has an alien in him. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll inform Kali. You stay where you are, help the people you're with, and I'll, I'll inform Kali. Go, go! And, 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 actually, and, and she actually stops and says, What is it with you and strange alien beings? You're always around them! I'm lucky. Uh, so, and she says, And you're going to stay right there. So staying right they here. Cl- they click off the link. The two side cops kind of shrug themselves off after getting up into the like, you know, kind of shaking their heads, going, "Oh, wow." <laughs> yeah, Julia looks over and says, "That wasn't in the report." This is, but but we had it labeled. He was a, a P nine. I didn't think he was that rated. Apparently, apparently he's more than that rated. It looks over. I'm good. Step forward and say, excuse me, your rogue psychic telepath person now has a strong alien entity in him, and he is roaming the ship. He's going to give a bad name to psychics everywhere, especially to you two, because you failed to apprehend him. Oh, doubly so, because he's a teak. He's a telekinetic that wasn't in the file. Well, he is now. The alien must have woken something up in him. He kind of shakes their heads like, apparently so. But we know he's on the ship. We're not going here. You sure about that? There's nowhere he can't go. All the decks are locked up. We're in the middle mm-hmm. of not, not known space. They're not letting anybody he's in telekinetic. off the ship. He's telekinetic. He can move things to open things. True. But he can only do so much. Telekinetics is a... Uh, it's not a scalpel. It's a, it's a sledgehammer. For humans... He has an alien entity in him. You don't know what he can do. Julia looks over. We didn't know he could do this. So we're all adapting to this situation. How about you go and try and find him? We'll start doing scans as best we can. We're going to try, uh, try to see if we can track him down. It took us a long time to get Connor. Who knows how long it's going to take to get him. But at least it's in an enclosed space. We work from one end, work to the other. If any luck, we'll be able to find him and root him out before he does one, anything else tricky. And they, they said, and they said, well, we'll need to get something from our, our, our quarters first. Okay. You don't need my permission. You'll have to come back here to answer the charges against him. He looks over and says, for the record, we had him. You asked us to bring him here to deal with your problem. So if anybody's trying to charge us, Guess what, citizen lieutenant? It's going to be you. So you can deal. And in the meantime, let's try to deal with the homicidal uh, the homicidal crazy thing with telekinetic powers currently roaming the ship. Shall we? Sounds like a plan. Off you go. So he kind of shrugged and looked at you. Julie actually says, you know, I could blank her mind in ten seconds. Not now, not now. <sighs> They go back out to the ship. They're, they immediately just kind of get, you know, in. They're no longer in character. They're in business mode. <laughs> okay. So, looks over. Uh, it's a good uh, sex says, perhaps I should go out and look myself. I might have some better experiences, though. I will not be able to take on that uh, alone. Who who was speaking? That was Kurt Busek, the, the Pop oh, okay. Mara, yeah. Spiritualist, yeah. Spiritualist. He's a ranger masquerading as a spiritualist. I will, I, I will do what I can, but please keep an eye on your friend. Of course. Okay. 
and I'll get up a chair and pull it up to the front of the cell and say, so, you're right. How was it having an alien in your brain? And <laughs> start chatting her up. <laughs> was infuriating. Interesting. The entire time it was lying to you, I was throwing myself uselessly against its telepathic bonds. Okay. You need some sort of, like, code word we can use in the future. Like... Watermelon or something. <laughs> Y'all need a safe word? Uh, yes, we need a safe word. <laughs> I think so, watermelon is an excellent code word. Alright, so if you ever get occupied by an alien entity once again and you can't move and you can't stop them, you need to somehow force them to say watermelon. That'll be a lot easier than trying to kick them out or <laughs> move your body or something. Well, I assume it will be. Yes! That ordeal was excruciating! Ah, uh, I hate to say this, because I normally like to go with a nice cliffhanger, but I've honestly hit the limit of what I was prepared for. <laughs> <laughs> no we didn't quit. We wore out the DM? <laughs> Mostly, it's, it's again the, you know, strategically, you've been now introduced to one of the major big bads of the story, and like a significantly strong enough empo- uh, a bad guy, you should not be able to defeat him on the first encounter. He should make you terrified, which I believe that has successfully been done. Uh, Pi has been brought to the future, has been brought back to... <laughs> back the- to the future. Uh, say it. Say it. Say it. You know you want to. <laughs> That's okay. As somebody pointed out uh, from Star Trek Star Trek Three, uh, Christopher Lloyd played a Klingon that they then stole his ship and in Star Trek Four used it to travel to 1984 to pick up whales. So that is now two pieces of someone stealing a time machine from Doc Brown. Yep. <laughs> um, so. But yes, now that you have come back to the future, uh, with a whole host I was gonna of say people, it myself if you didn't, so. <laughs> go for it, I don't care, it's alright. Um, can you do it like, like, you know, the whole over dramatic thing that, that, uh, Christopher Lloyd can do? Back to the future! Might have to practice a little. Okay, fair enough. Um, but now that you're back, you're actually back in the Marie Celeste, but you're in a now human form with your son, Wagner, who is some sort of other scientist who's in the body of a Procuri, and uh, Vladimir, who's in the body of a Drazi, which I now have to make stats for, because, again... Uh, I would I've... say that Ty would try to babysit these people, but she will not. She will just abandon them and let them work this shit out themselves. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you don't want to make stats for them, you don't have to. <laughs> unless you want. Unless you want to. I was about to say, for Ty, be thankful this is not a D&D game. Ty has gone from chaotic neutral to, like, somewhere the evil range now. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> I don't have uh, more I think important things to deal evil. with. He just has more important things to deal with. Fair enough. Yeah. What'd you say, Becca? I, I, I would say Ty is still pretty safely chaotic neutral. Okay, okay. I'll just say I'll make the argument there, yes. Uh, I, I think you've taken a step towards, but you haven't quite reached myself. She's, like, looking out for herself and her kid, and she doesn't really care about these people she just met and tricked into helping her go to the future that people, came along with her, because that's only fair, I guess. People you have used and abused, and... <laughs> so now I also have to figure out their backstory to see what you actually have access to, because... <laughs> You don't have the usual access that uh, your, that Ty the Brakiri did because now that belongs to uh, Ty the Brakiri that is out there on the ship somewhere. Um, yeah, that's going to be more complicated. Ty's going to be more interested in dealing with all that than she's going to be in these people that decided to hitch a ride with her to the future. Fair enough. Because she talked them into it. But you know they're going to follow you around simply because, if nothing else, you convinced Vladimir to do this. And you convinced... not a bad person. She's just not a great person. 
Fair enough. <laughs> but at the same time, you convince them of this, so more than likely, they're going to start following you around because you're the one with the plan. Oh, Ty will just send them to Mirgorat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mirgorat's going to be in heaven. Oh, oh, Ty has great. absolutely got already has a plan for that for that little problem. Ah, so now we are all together, yes. People from the past, people from the present, and maybe people from the future. Ah, but at what price? The thing from beyond the stars has a telepath in its head. Strange people are now here in different bodies. And who is Ty now? Join us next time, and we will explain things. And, by the way, I have another dream in my... Nope, nope.